the Supreme Court of Canada in R.V. Morgenthaler did not conclude that there is a constitutional right to abortion in Canada. Prime Minister, do you believe in equal rights for all human beings? If we don't have the right to life, then we have no other rights at all. The overturning of Roe v. Wade was a game changer for the pro-life fight in the United States of America. But could a similar revolutionary win for the unborn ever take place in a country like Canada? A documentary directed by filmmaker Kevin Gunn called Row Canada, the true north in a post-Row world, certainly purports it's possible. And today I bring you an interview with two key players involved in the film who give a visionary and a legal perspective on how that could be. Today's a difficult day. The judgment coming out of the United States is an attack on women's freedom, and quite frankly, it's an attack on everyone's freedoms and rights. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News, and just in case you're unfamiliar with the landmark case known as Roe v. Wade, you should know that despite what a difficult day it was for the Justin Trudeaus of the world, June 24, 2022 was the day the Supreme Court of the United States overturned the landmark decision in that case, effectively squashing 50 years of legal precedence for any claim to a constitutional right to abortion and instead allowing individual states to come up with their own abortion laws. The decision was celebrated by pro-life advocates not just in the U.S., but across the world, including in Canada. And joining me today to discuss how that win has impacted Canada's pro-life movement will be the Canadian Campaign Life Coalition's Josephine Lukey, who is one of two principal investigators for this film, as well as U.S. Attorney Royce Hood. I've linked the details on how you can watch this full film on demand or even host a screening of the film, if you'd like, in the written article for this report, which is in the description box below. But for now, here's our interview. Now, I did watch the documentary, and it really does address one of the main questions I've seen people have on both sides of the debate in Canada. Is what we saw in the U.S. with Roe v. Wade possible in this country? Why don't you start with what the inspiration was to go ahead and be the lead investigator for that documentary, or one of two, I should say. Yeah, so the overturn of Roe v. Wade was the biggest pro-life development in my lifetime, Mm -hmm. probably in the lifetimes of most of the viewers. And I think we we felt the ripple effects of that decision here in Canada. Um, I did a lot of media interviews on the day that Roe v. Wade was overturned. I think a lot of Canadians were either in a panic over what they perceived as an attack on women's rights, you know, attack on bodily autonomy. In Canada, we will always defend women's rights to choose and continue to work to expand Uh, access to the full range of reproductive health and services uh, across the country. But today, I think of those generations of women around the world and specifically in the United States who fought so hard to gain rights and continue to fight today to get more and more rights because there's still so much more work to do and are facing this devastating setback. Or they were like me and many other pro-lifers who saw this as a really significant step forward in ending a human rights injustice that takes Mm -hmm. millions of human lives every year. And so we were celebrating um, because for the longest time, this was the goal of the American pro-life movement to see this decision um, be reversed. And so when it was, um, I think we started asking the question here in Canada um, of how we could capitalize on that momentum, how we could reopen the conversation on abortion here, and whether we could ever see a victory like that. The director, uh, Kevin Dunn, um, who's also the producer of the film from Dunn Media and Entertainment, he approached me about serving as the principal investigator for the film. And it was such a monumental moment in history that I couldn't pass up this opportunity to share the story with the rest of the world. Great. Now, also joining us, uh, who was a big part of this as well, is lawyer Royce Hood. Thanks for being on Rebel News. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about your expertise and how that sort of connected you with being a part of this. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, 
you know, I'm the I'm, I'm a former board member with the March for Life, and I'm the founder of something called the Law of Life Summit. And I work with pro-life groups across the United States, um, really just trying to strategize, trying to network, trying to figure out things that we can do to make abortion unthinkable, to help women, to help babies, to help families. Um, but then to also just to combat the laws and the policies that we see coming down. Um, the, another big part of what I do is uh, a lot of the groups I work with are involved in sort of combating a lot of the misinformation that's out there, uh, the censorship, things of that nature, which is, um, I know it's bad in Canada. It's bad here as well. Well, exactly. What can you tell us for those who maybe haven't followed this as closely? What can you tell us about sort of the debate on whether or not it should be a human right for women to have abortion? And then now that we've seen the overturning in the U.S. Well, um, it's either a person or it isn't. And if we believe that um, a conception that a unique person based on a unique DNA is present, then that is a person. Um, now there's, um, you know, so I think to me, it's just that simple. Uh, stand for something or fall for anything. Um, I don't believe there's any, there's really should be any middle room with respect to the dignity and the sanctity of human life. Oh, it's crazy. I've been seeing a lot of things recently about the founding of Planned Parenthood. Um, almost like these, like, uh, these talking points that come out, you know, Margaret Sanger, who was behind that was a big proponent of eugenics and family planning. She has plenty of quotes about abortion. Abortion didn't became legal during her lifetime, but it was there. Um, so I, I think a lot of misinformation is like the origins of Planned Parenthood. What are they all about? I see things all the time that, you know, here in the U.S., oh, they provide cancer screenings and contraception and they do this, they do that. No, they don't. They don't do any of that stuff. They say they do. It's on their website. But if you look at their tax returns, if you look at their business model, they are an abortion business and they're very good at it. Um, and they target communities that, frankly, people should be appalled by. They target they target communities, you know, minority communities in particular. And I think that, you know, they are so good at the messaging. Another big thing is the Associated Press topical guide. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but here in the U.S., the Associated Press put out a topical guide on how their reporters are to address abortion. And for example... Uh, pro-lifers are not to be under any circumstances referred to as pro-lifers. They are anti-abortion. Any good news related to a mom choosing life is not to be covered at all. And there's literally a guide that you can look at. It's a PDF that they use. And it's unbelievable when you read it and then you start looking at the headlines, you realize how much synergy there is on the pro-choice side, how much strategy there is on the pro-choice side. So I think we need to be vigilant. We need to make sure people understand that there are Despite what people like, um, are, we have si uh, sitting senators here in the U.S. that claim pregnancy centers are, you know, terrorism outlets basically and do nothing good for women. Well, we have tons of pregnancy centers right here in my in Illinois where I'm located that provide free pregnancy care, pr uh, free ultrasounds, clothing. It is, and when you mentioned the uh, misinformation about what exactly Planned Parenthood is offering to people, it uh, reminds me of a little clip I saw from pro-life activist Kristen Hawkins, who's in this documentary as well. Let's throw to that where she proves someone who has one of those false beliefs wrong. Do you still give her money, resources, diapers? Do you give her daycare? Yeah, does Planned Parenthood do that, man? Yes! No, they don't. Daycare offers services that help they you. They do not offer diapers or baby formula yes, or maternity do. clothes. I will bet you $10 million that they do not because I have gone into Planned Parenthood multiple times. Would you like to call Planned Parenthood right now and ask they them if they give diapers and formula? List. I don't care what you have Here. to say about it. You don't care what I have to say because you don't care about facts. I get that. But let no, me just call Planned Parenthood. No, facts don't care about your feelings, unfortunately. So the lives you think you're saving, you're I'm not calling doing Planned shit. Parenthood. I'm don't calling Planned listen. Parenthood. Hold on, be quiet. No, I don't fucking what you have to say. Do you offer diapers or formula? Oh, we do not. Oh, we do not. I'm sorry. Thank you. I knew you didn't help that. You just kill babies. Thank you. Planned Parenthood just confirmed they do not offer formula or diapers. Two miles away. They do not do that. They're not solutions, but they offer Yeah, that's just like how abortion isn't a solution, ma'am. Go f*** yourself. Have a great day. Jesus loves you. We're not going to give the meat and potatoes away of the documentary. People can definitely watch it. And we have a link for how they can watch that below. But now that you've done the investigating for the documentary, and plus, of course, you've been an activist, um, you're involved with the March for Life and things like that. Where do you think Canada is actually at today since uh, Roe v. Wade was overturned? How was it before the pro-life fight? 
politically, we're in a terrible position. Uh, one of the things you point out in the film is that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is our most pro-abortion prime minister yet. Um, this is on his agenda constantly um, promoting abortion here in Canada and overseas. And so it's really hard, I think, for us to pass any sort of pro-life legislation, even things that are really common sense that most Canadians would support, like a ban on sex selective abortion, you know, aborting a baby girl just because she's a girl. We couldn't even pass that legislation. Um, so in that respect, we're kind of worse off than we've ever been before. However, we see a lot of hope having conversations with people on the streets. Um, I think one of the great things about the overturn of Roe v. Wade is that Canadian culture is so heavily influenced by American culture because we consume so much of the same media that when this, this huge decision happened in the United States, a lot of people started questioning their own positions on abortion. And this was such a long-standing decision. Everyone was just pro-choice by default. And then when the Supreme Court justices said, actually, there is no right to abortion in the Constitution, I think a lot of people started to have to ask themselves, why am I pro-choice or why am I pro-life? And people started talking about it more. So that's definitely what we've seen, including here in Canada, that this Dobbs decision in the U.S. prompted people to start having those conversations and developing an interest in this issue and re-examining it where they thought this was a settled debate. Um, so we've seen a lot of popular figures like Jordan Peterson, for instance, start bringing up abortion more and more often on social media. So we're really excited to see what direction this is headed in. And again, to encourage people to take initiative and look into the issue themselves. I think whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, we're talking about the killing of innocent human beings here. Objectively, that's what it is. And that's way too controversial to just, you know, form your opinion after like a five minute TikTok video. Like look into it, do your own research. And we're, we're confident that we will see protection for the preborn the more that this conversation is brought up. What's some common misinformation you're confronted with uh, when you are advocating for life? I think one of the things that the documentary points out is that over 95% of biologists agree that life begins at fertilization. And that's something we see all the time is people lying about when life begins. Even our criminal code of Canada states that you don't have a human being until the moment of birth. A child, they use the term child, child becomes a human being in the eyes of the law once it's fully separated from the mother. And that definition has no basis in science. So I think that's the worst form of misinformation. Because frankly, if we weren't talking about a human being, then I would be pro-choice. Have as many abortions as you want. I don't care. But if this is a human being, then again, we're talking about killing an innocent human being, which I believe is wrong. Many other people believe is wrong. Um, it's not something we should be taking lightly by any means. Um, so I think that's that's one of the worst um, issues of, of misinformation that presents itself, but also the idea that pro-lifers hate women, that we're driven by this desire to control people's bodies, that we're hateful, that we're bigoted. Um, you can disagree with us, but also recognize that our motives here are completely like pure. I mean, again, we're motivated with this desire to extend human rights to all human beings including those who are the youngest members of the human family, who might have fewer abilities than us, might be less developed, but that doesn't at all change the fact that they're equal to us in dignity and deserving of protection. In fact, because they're so vulnerable, they're deserving of protection. So again, I think you, you see a lot of um, attempts to demonize the pro-life movement. Um, and the, the reason why is to shut down the debate um, because they don't wanna be having this conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for giving us some insight on what's going on in Canada's pro-life movement and, of course, your documentary. If people want to find out more about the documentary or more about uh, the organization you're involved with when it comes to advocating for pro-life causes, let them know now. So uh, in terms of getting involved, um, we recommend that viewers check out their local right to life organization. Um, I'm part of a group called Campaign Life Coalition, which is a national pro-life and pro-family organization. We definitely encourage people to get involved, to come out to our own National March for Life in Ottawa on May 9th. Um, but also we really need people involved um, in their local communities. Um, so 
there's plenty of resources online if you want to get connected that way. Um, just small things like, go, you know, go to your local Right to Life uh, meeting. If they're hosting a screening of the film, Real Canada, The True North in a Post-Real World, it's a great way to get educated. Um, you can take a lot of small steps that way. There's a lot of, way to ed a lot of ways to educate yourself about this issue online as well. Um, so there's no shortage of these opportunities, um, but there is a shortage of people who are involved in the movement. We need every single pair of hands that we can get um, because, again, this is a massive human rights injustice and we need your help. At Rebel News, we don't back down from bringing you the other side of the story, including when that's about an independent film that would either be ignored or vilified by state choice media. If you appreciate the news that we bring you, consider being a part of what makes it possible by going to rebelnews.com donate and chipping in what you can. We appreciate your support.